Around this time in October, a couple years ago when I was in 7th grade, I went to a friend's house for a slumber party and we're calling her Charlotte. It was Charlotte's birthday party and she had a big sleepover with 10 other girls. I knew 6 of them because they were friends and they lived in our neighborhood. The other 4 were her cousins and a friend from school. She had ice cream and cake, we danced, prank call, you know the regular preteen sleepover. Later that night, we watched a scary movie and after it was over, one of Charlotte's friends from school said, we should play the Ouija board. By the way, we're calling her Sam. I wasn't really into it because my mom always told me to stay away from those things. Charlotte wanted to play too, and she said, how are we going to play without the board? Sam said, we can make one. All we need is cardboard. Somehow, they found cardboard in the kitchen, and Sam made the board and a triangle piece with a hole in it. I was like, that's not going to work. When Sam and Charlotte played, the piece moved across the board. When the piece moved, everyone screamed, and Charlotte's dad came in the room asking what the problem was. Charlotte immediately scooted the board under the bed and said, I thought I saw a bug, but it was just a hairball. And her dad seemed a little irritated, but he just walked out the room. When he left, Sam pulled the board back from under the bed, saying that the game needed to be finished, but Charlotte said she still wanted to ask questions. So everyone each got to ask a question, and the board answered it. They even asked questions of today, and at the time, our president was Obama, and it knew who the president was. When it was Sam's turn, she asked jokingly, since the board knew everything, she asked when we were going to die, and it said, tonight. And from there on, everyone stopped playing. Charlotte got scared and didn't even want to touch the board anymore. Sam constantly said that we all have to say goodbye, but everyone wanted to stay away. And usually when you don't say goodbye, the spirits that you talk through, through the board, continue to roam around your home. This story time is from a follower, and she said she liked to be called Desiree. So last year, Desiree was starting college, and she lived in a dorm room. She went to school for communications, and she liked everything about it, including the new friends she made. One of the new friends she created was a guy, and his name was Jalen, and she was really started to like him. They met in math class, and from there, they became friends. Jalen was low-key hinting that he liked her also. He did nice things for her, like help her with schoolwork, buy her lunch, and was just an all-around good person to vent to. Couple days before winter break, Cassidy was finally ready to tell Jalen how she felt about him. So that day, they had plans to go out as usual. They ended up going to the mall, got food, and for the first time, they went to Cassidy's dorm room. They turned on a movie. They both fell asleep in the middle of the movie. A couple minutes later, Cassidy woke up and her leg was wet. When she stood up, come to find him, Jalen peed in her bed. This story time is from a follower and she says she wants advice and would like to be called Milan. Also, please no one judge her. So Milan has been with her boyfriend Damien for two months. They started talking two weeks before making their relationship official. She said it was pretty fast, but the past week, she had not been feeling Damien and started to notice how toxic he was. And she didn't know if she wanted to be with him anymore. So she decided to call it quits before they got too deep. So she told him she didn't want to be with him and that they jumped into the relationship too soon. And they split. Damien was upset and disrespected her in the process of the breakup and now they're not cool anymore. A couple days later, she started feeling weird. She'd get nauseous and dizzy. Come to find out she was pregnant and Damien was the child's father. She knew this because she took a pregnancy test. So right now she doesn't want to be with Damien and she said she wasn't ready for a child or to be a single mother. She said she wanted to get an abortion and was not going to tell Damien. Comment down below some advice. This is the true story of the Nutcracker. We've all heard of this story. Some might have even gone to see it live. But the true story is very horrifying. It starts with a young girl named Marie. She receives a Nutcracker for Christmas, which her brother breaks trying to crack a particularly large nut. She patches the doll up with some ribbon from her dress until her clockmaker godfather can properly fix it up. That that night while everyone's asleep Marie sneaks back downstairs to be with the Nutcracker but as the clock strikes midnight things go from a mildly creepy doll obsession to a full-blown horror movie rats pile up into the house from nowhere led by the seven-headed mouse king yeah a mouse with seven heads then Marie herself is shrunken into a mouse size it gets crazier like for part two this is the true story of the Nutcracker part two Okay, so boom, like I said, Marie herself shrunk into a mouse's size after rats piled up everywhere led by a seven-headed mouse king. But lucky for Marie, the other dolls, which were soldiers, sprang to life and started battling the rats. 
and the soldiers are led by none other than the Nutcracker. It doesn't go too well for the dolls until Marie takes off her slipper and chucks it at the Mouse King, distracting him long enough for the Nutcracker to kill him. Marie passed out and when she wakes up normal sized, the room is a complete mess. And there are seven tiny crowns scattered around her. Years later, Marie professes her love for the Nutcracker and that night finds herself doll size again. But this time it's permanent and she spends the rest of her life living with the Nutcracker. Story time on how I cheated on my husband with his son. Okay, so boom, let's get right into it. So I met my husband at my job where we quickly fell in love, got married, and the rest is history. My husband had a child from a previous relationship who was 17 years old. By the way, I'm 27 and my husband is 34. My husband was really great at his job, but he started treating me really bad. He was always working and had me stay home because he wanted to be the provider. He also bought food for me when I was hungry since I don't cook, but sometimes it would just be food that I didn't want. Before he leaves, he can kisses me and makes breakfast for the house as if that's gonna make anything better and only spends time with me on his one day off. It's ridiculous. Well, I started spending a lot more time with my stepson and we became really close. I started feeling something real between us and my husband was being horrible. So I made my move. Like for part two, part two on how I cheated on my husband with his son. Okay, so boom, like I said, my husband was treating me horribly so I made my move. I started feeling something real between me and my stepson. We watched movies together, we went grocery shopping together, and plain just enjoyed each other's company. I felt something real between us and I know he did too. One day, once again, while my husband was at work, my stepson and I started watching a Netflix movie. I thought it was the perfect time to just go for it. He was laughing at one of the scenes and I just took his face and I kissed him. He jumped up and pushed me and said, whoa, why the f did you go and just do that? Then I said, I thought, he just ran to his room and called his dad. My heart sank. My husband left me and took his son and divorced me too. Now I'm currently dating and have no luck, and he's remarried with a beautiful family. I can't find a guy half what my ex-husband was. Don't be like me, appreciate- Am I the asshole for moving out instead of sharing my living space, which is causing a problem for my mom and her boyfriend? My dad passed away when I, 16 female, was like three. We lived in a house that my grandparents owned, and they agreed to let my mom and I live there rent-free. Over the years, whenever my mom dated, I tried to spend nights that she had guests over at my grandparents' house. When I was 10, my grandfather renovated the basement to make me my own kind of apartment. I have my own bedroom, kitchen, and living room to go with my bedroom. My mom met a guy last year, and it got serious. He moved in with his two kids, which was fine by me. My mom deserves to be happy and to have someone in her life. There's three bedrooms upstairs, so it's perfect. One for them and one for each of his kids. Everything was going great and according to plan until the kids asked where I was staying. I said that I lived in the basement. They made a joke about me living in my mom's basement. I invited them down to play Mario Kart to be sociable and to show off if I'm going to be completely honest. I have a couch that my uncle gave me and my dad's old lazy boy in the living room. The recliner is only for me, and all of my friends know that. The kids started complaining about how it wasn't fair that I got all of this space to myself. One tried sitting in my chair even after I told her that it was only for me. I settled that immediately. It's mine. As you fucking should have. This is your home. Y'all don't get to just come in here and take over shit because it's not fair. Oh fucking well. Life isn't fucking fair. Just because you see somebody with something doesn't automatically mean that you're entitled to have it as well. Like, this could have been a great fucking learning experience for these goddamn kids. It really fucking could have. After a few races where I demolished them, I said that it was time for them to go back upstairs. They said no. So I called my mom and I told her to come and get them. Over the course of the next week, my mom started hinting that maybe my living room should be a common area. What about the fucking living room that's upstairs that's a part of the goddamn house? Why the kids can't be common in there? I said no. She started insisting, but I said no. My mom has a key to my door. I never locked my door unless she had guests over. I started locking it when Dan and his kids moved in. I came home from school and I found the kids in my living room. They had gone into my room. They were eating my snacks that I paid for myself. I yelled and told them to get the fuck out. I called for my mom to explain why they were there. She said she decided it wasn't fair that I got almost a third of the house to myself and that my TV and gaming systems should be shared. I said, fuck that. She got really upset with me and said it was a done deal and I had to deal with it. 
Um, absolutely the fuck not. You're not the asshole. You're not the asshole because I 100% would have moved the fuck out too. What the fuck you mean all of a sudden at me having this area, my area is not fair and that my TV and gaming systems need to be shared with motherfuckers who clearly do not respect boundaries. You said that the living room should be a common area. That does not mean they get to go in my motherfucking kitchen and eat my goddamn snacks. That don't mean they get to go inside my motherfucking bedroom. So no. You're not the asshole at all, babe. I would have shut this shit the fuck down and moved out too. My grandfather and my uncles came and got me and all the things that mattered to me, including my recliner. He told my mom that she needed to start paying rent if I wasn't going to be living there. I have a bedroom at my grandparents' house, but I miss my area. My mom is trying to get me to come back so they can save money to get their own place. Yeah, right. I'm not that dumb. She said that I need to stop being a brat and behave like a, an adult. She's fucking 16. She's not an adult. She's fu That's this bitch's problem. That is this bitch's problem. They want the 16-year-old to always have fucking eyes on the younger kids. So we're going to allow them to constantly be down there in your fucking area. Your 16-year-old is not a goddamn adult. That's dumb as... Tell your mama to come outside. I just want to talk for a little bit. I told my mom that I was living like an adult until you let those kids into my area without my permission. She tried to say she could do whatever she wanted to in her house. Sometimes I think she forgets it wasn't my dad's house and she didn't inherit it. I feel a little guilty about this because my mom is actually pretty cool. And I hate that this is causing strain on her relationship. Am I the asshole? Absolutely not, babe. You are not the asshole because your mom nor those kids have a right to your fucking space, to your food, to your gaming system and TV. None of that shit is open for every fucking body. This was your area. There was a lock and a key installed on the fucking door for a reason. Because you had privacy. Just because all of a sudden these spoiled ass kids want to come around doesn't automatically mean this is communal property. No. Absolutely not, baby. You are not the asshole in this situation. It does suck that this is causing a strain on their relationship. But honestly, what two grown motherfuckers expect to go about life living fucking rent free? No, she had to have known that this was not going to work out. She know she had to have known that she was not going to be able to bully you into doing what the fuck she wanted to do and still be able to live rent free. This I, I know maybe you did because, you know, some of these people, they don't always be there. They, you know, they'd be a color short of a fucking rainbow. But I truly feel like she had to have known that this was not going to work out in her favor. But oh, fucking well, they better get some jobs and start collecting cans, look in the couch cushion for some quarters or something. They better figure it the fuck out because they got rent to pay or they got to get out. Am I the asshole for kicking a girl out of my party for calling her boyfriend daddy? I, female 24, was hosting a small scale hangout with about 15 of my friends. One girl, female 23, is an acquaintance of mine and she came with her boyfriend. We were all sitting around in the main room and eating pizza when she came to sit and sat on her boyfriend's lap. A little weird since there were open seats, but I didn't say anything. <laughs> While we were talking as a group, she would always refer to her boyfriend as daddy. She would interject with things like, quote, daddy just bought me a new stand mixer and daddy looks so handsome in the shirt right i told him to get it <laughs> at first we thought she was joking or messing with us but she continued doing it and the rest of us were side-eyeing each other and were kind of uncomfortable i asked her if she could save the pet names for home because some of us were feeling uncomfortable she got upset and told me to stop making such a big deal over a nickname and slut shaming her i told her that wasn't my intention at all but i would appreciate if she could stop because it was killing the vibe <laughs> she started ranting at me about a whole lot of stuff and I just told her and her boyfriend to please leave. Her boyfriend was pissed too, but they eventually got out. The rest of the evening was less uncomfortable and way more peaceful. A few of my friends who didn't know the girl I kicked out thanked me for making her leave, but we all felt kind of awkward because of what happened. Am I the asshole? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> If they're being weird and you don't really know her, you'd be like, okay, like, especially if she's not matching the vibe. Yeah. Well, and it's your house. So if you don't like how someone's acting, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And she wasn't slut shaming her. She was just like, well, did she do it in front of everyone? I would have pulled yeah. her. Oh, I would have pulled her to the side. That's kind of mean. Yeah. The real tea with that is that I call my dad daddy. I call my parents mommy and daddy mama daddy. I used to. Yeah. Until the internet ruined it for me. I know. Now when I do it, it's not in front of people because people are weird about my dad. He's that means I'm I get it. But. Do you have like a lot of people thirsting after your dad oh yeah it's bad what we don't even tag him in anything anymore is Everyone he getting a lot of followers lost privileges yeah we made my parents make their profiles private what? <laughs> we're like private profiles for everyone oh my god oh i didn't know your dad looked like that or whatever you know wow <laughs> i yeah i'd put him private too <laughs> shit
Am I the asshole for how I responded when my fiance's sister commented on my flat chest? Mm. To get this out of the way, I'm a flat chested girl. I suffer from health issues and growth problems, so I'm small, but I'm proud of myself. My fiance and I went over to his parents' house for his niece's birthday. I wore a sweetheart shaped dress, and my sister in law, Mel, who always comments on my chest, saw the dress and went like, in quotes, this dress needs boobs, and you ain't got any. Spelled what a it. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I feel kind of weird saying, you ain't got any. <laughs> <laughs> I ignored her, but then at dinner, she asked if I was planning on getting a plastic surgery before the wedding so that I didn't ruin the wedding dress. I found this offensive, especially when others were watching. I said nothing, but when we were sitting in the living room later, Mel suddenly started wiping her nose and trying to clear it. It's stuffed due to a cold, apparently. She has a large nose, so I smiled and said, do you need help with that? I could get the plunger for you. <gasps> she was stunned, and the room got awkward after her husband was laughing. <laughs> She was fuming and told my fiance that I stepped out of line and ruined her daughter's birthday with my words that humiliated her. My fiance said Aww. I shouldn't have gone to scene after his parents told us to leave. I explained how her comments made me feel, but he said that she said it out of concern, but my oh. comment was out of hate. Now she's expecting an apology. Did I go too far here? Throw this whole family away. <laughs> Throw them away. One bullshit. Oh, you embarrass me in front of my daughter. You're setting a bad example for my daughter or whatever she said. How are you not setting a bad example for your daughter? Criticizing another woman's body, belittling her, degrading her, yep. suggesting she should get an expensive, invasive mm -hmm. plastic surgery to make her better, to mm -hmm. make her more acceptable. You're creating body issues with your daughter, bitch. Right. Fuck you. The fiance, throw him away. <laughs> throw him away. If you have a man that's not going to stick up for you, where do you think he heard Where do you think the sister heard it from first? I bet she got ideas from her mm -hmm. brother, this fiance being like, "Yeah, you know, that's I wish her point. I wish her boobs were bigger." Oh and God. that's why he's they defending were in And that's why he's defending her saying, "This was out of care. Yours was out of hate." No, that's called karma. Okay. She deserved that clap back. I'm sorry, out of care doesn't usually sound like this dress needs boobs and you ain't got any. Also, okay. I'm sorry. I would much rather, as someone that has large boobs, I would much rather, and I know the grass is always greener. It's one of those things. I get it. But I would much rather have small boobs or being flat chested, truly. Like clothes fit you better. Oh, what, what do you mean? That dress needs boobs. Ugh. I know. Hate people commenting on other people's bodies. I know. And that's what's so interesting to me that the reaction was so as if she was shocked because honestly, like it was more discreet. I mean, yeah, like I guess the plunger, the reference <laughs> was there but like i mean maybe she I maybe it was know. just the plunger but also i could i could see something like even if she would have said like oh you have a cold like maybe it's a your maybe it's your deviated septum maybe you need a nose job right yeah maybe we could maybe we could go see the same plastic yeah. surgeon and get a two for one deal mm -hmm. i'll get my you get oh, your nose oh that's hilarious story time on how i lied to my boyfriend about being the father of my child okay so boom let's get right into it so i have a boyfriend who's the love of my life and i'm literally upset obsessed with him i want to be with him forever we've been together for two years but unfortunately my boyfriend ended up breaking my trust you see my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend and i found out that they've been sleeping with each other for the past year once i found out my boyfriend begged and begged and begged for me to stay and he cut all ties with my friend telling me he doesn't want to lose me i was so hurt but because i loved him so much i forgave him but my forgiveness came with the price I ended up having a one night stand with his best friend. I wanted revenge and I was being spiteful and just doing the whole tit for tat thing. But little did I know what was to come. Like for part, part two on how I lied to my boyfriend about being the father of my child. Okay, so boom, like I said, after I found out that my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend for over a year, I ended up having a one night stand with his best friend because I wanted revenge. I was being spiteful and doing tit for tat. I felt horrible about it and me and his best friend decided not to tell anyone. Well, I got pregnant and without him knowing, I had a DNA test done on my boyfriend. He is not the father. And the only other person I slept with was his best friend. I really feel horrible, but seven years later, my now husband still thinks my seven-year-old son is his. 
Am I the asshole for not telling him even though he cheated on me first? Story time on how my girlfriend got me a bunny for my birthday and I killed it by mistake. I feel terrible. Okay, so boom, let me explain. I love animals. I'm an animal lover. I have two dogs and one thing I've been wanting for the longest is a bunny. I'm literally always looking at pictures of bunnies and videos on YouTube about bunnies. My girlfriend knew this about me so for my birthday she surprised me with a bunny and made me so happy. I had a bunny house and food with water ready for my new bunny life. But I guess I wasn't as prepared as I thought. Three days after getting my new bunny, I let him out his cage to hop around since he was pooping a lot. I also had my dogs out playing and everything, and everything was fine. Well, little did I know my heart was really about to be broken because I messed up. Like for part two. Part two on how my girlfriend got me a bunny for my birthday and I killed it by mistake. Okay, so boom, like I said, three days after getting my new bunny, I let him out his cage because he was pooping a lot. I put him in my backyard alongside with my two dogs. He was hopping and my dogs were playing and everything was fine. Until my dog had a grass seed between his paws and I started taking it out. Once I was done, I looked for my bunny and I couldn't find him. My heart sank and I started panicking. Panicking. I went to the front of my house where the road was and I seen my bunny completely flattened on the road. He was ran over by a car while I was paying attention to my dog. I cried, bagged him up and buried him and I didn't even have a chance to name him yet. I feel like literal trash. Should I tell my girlfriend or should I just move on and do better in the future? Comment. Story time about how I almost ruined Christmas. Earlier in the year, Ancestry DNA had a sale on their kit. I thought it would be a great gift idea, so I bought six of them for Christmas presents. On Christmas Eve, my family got together to exchange presents, and I gave my mom, dad, brother, and two sisters each a kit. As soon as everyone opened their gift at the same time, my mom started freaking out. She told us that she didn't want us to clean them because they had unsafe chemicals. We explained to her how there were actually no chemicals, but we could tell that she was still flustered. Later, she started trying to convince us that only one of us kids need to take it since we will all have the same results and to resell the extra kits to save money. Then our parents went upstairs and they were fighting for an hour while we were downstairs trying to figure out who has a different dad. At this point, I thought that I had totally ruined Christmas and messed up by buying these kits. However, my F up actually turned into a Christmas miracle. Turns out my sister's father passed away shortly after she was born. My mom's good friend was able to help her through the darkest time in her life and they went on to fall in love and create the rest of our family. They never told us because of how hard it was for my mom. My mom was finally strong enough to share stories and photos with us for the first time and it truly brought us even closer to Together as a family. I'm 19 and my brother and sister-in-law, both 32, moved back into my parents' home last week. They have four kids, age 1, 3, 4, and 6, so of course what was a peaceful house has turned into a chaotic mess, like a literal pigsty. On Friday, my brother asked me what my day-to-day -day schedule was like so they can get an idea of how babysitting would work. Obviously, I went WTF because I never agreed to babysitting for anyone. I sat there dumbfounded and asked him to elaborate. Apparently, my dad offered to help them with childcare by using me despite me having classes to attend both in person and online, plus I work part-time, and no one cared to check with me to see if it was okay. I flat out said no, I was not babysitting Monday through Friday and they would have to find another solution. This upsets my sister-in-law and she starts complaining that I act like I don't love my nieces and nephews because I'm not willing to help them out and take care of them. My dad started complaining and told my mom to make me agree. At this point, I got up and finished dinner in my room because I was not about to deal with them guilt tripping me. Later, my brother approached me, showed me what was basically a weekly schedule that had hours that they worked and hours I was expected to look after the kids. All four because a six-year-old is homeschooling at the moment. To spare the rest of the boring details, I would be on duty from 6 a.m. till 1 p.m. and then again from 6 p.m. till 8 p.m. because they wanted special time. Again, I shut it down and told them that they were shit out of luck because I wasn't doing it. Cue my sister-in-law telling my dad that I won't do it so he came and started yelling at me calling me selfish and lazy and said that I'd have to come around eventually since they'll be living here for a while. Let me add, my dad doesn't even work, my mom does. He sits on his ass all day watching TV and when she gets home, he doesn't even speak to her until he wants to know what's for dinner. What should I do? My husband and I started dating when we were 13 and I left him 15 years later. He suggested having an open marriage and I didn't really want it but I felt like it was a trap to say yes. I agreed after him having brought it up a few times over the last few years. He said he didn't actually want to have sex with other women himself, he just found it extremely erotic to have a wife who would sleep with other men and he wanted to be a part of that. I said, okay, fine, as long as you're actually okay with this and because we'll be a team on this, I'll give it a go. He had been the only man that I'd ever slept with, so I was very hesitant about this. After I was knee-deep in exploring his fetish with him, he began to trickle the truth. He started by saying he might want to do the same and find a woman to sleep with himself. Then that he might be polyamorous. 
to admitting that he had been in love with my best friend for a decade and had been eating at him since we were 17 and now that we're part of this lifestyle 10 years later he can be honest about it i'm absolutely positive he chose these series of events exactly as he did so that i'd be a hypocrite if i opposed any of it however what he didn't expect is that i'd meet someone special someone i enjoyed talking to and someone who made me feel entirely different than i'd felt with my husband my whole life i left my husband telling him that we needed to talk i said that i don't think we're working anymore and that i'm not happy living this way he asked if i still loved him and i said not like i used to and that was it he was emotional of course but i think he saw it coming my husband tried to start a purely fwb type of relationship with my best friend after our divorce they were both lonely and kept seeing each other on dating sites they asked my blessing first but that's when i told her it wasn't purely innocent on his end because of what he told me in the year prior i hadn't told her yet because until that point it didn't matter and she was horrified he had promised her that he didn't have any feelings for her so it wouldn't be weird and convinced her that this would be super casual and platonic when in actuality he was deeply in love with her and trying to manipulate her they haven't talked since sucks to suck Am I in a cult slash high control group? I would like your perspective. I'm going to list a few laws of the group I'm in and I'd like feedback on if it sounds cultish, high control or not. One, no f before marriage. I think this is a pretty normal for most religions, but if it's found out that you've broken this rule and you confess, you will be put out for a certain amount of time and you aren't allowed to speak to anyone in quote, good standing. <laughs> Silencing rules, classic cult red flag. <laughs> Number two, not allowed to get a nose slash face piercing. If I do, I will be shamed and asked to take it out. Number three, I'm not supposed to paint my nails any color that isn't natural. So I have to do like soft pinks or nude colors. Someone was given gloves to wear on a Sunday because their nails were an inappropriate color. It's also recommended that you not dye your hair on natural colors. Number four, no drinking or drugs of any kind, even weed. And if it's found out and you confess to either of these things, you can be put out for a certain amount of time. Number five, you are supposed to report in every week to let the them know if you will or will not be in attendance to meetings if you will not be in attendance you're Deep supposed to cleaning give a my kitchen why. there are many more things but based on these things does it sound like a cult that's my question they say that these limitations are to help you basically stay away from sin or stay safe in the world but as i get older they feel suppressive mm, it sounds like a cult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know, you know what's wild is that well first of all well done finding the right reddit thread for <laughs> yes. us beautiful beautiful um gorgeous but i, I will say <laughs> <laughs> there are some of those rules that remind me of rules that existed at the somewhat cult-like media startup where I used to work, like not tying your hair on natural colors because you'll misrepresent the brand, only having your nails painted like chic natural colors. Like we can Did your boss also check if you were a virgin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but only on the first day. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get in there. There was no follow-up. But like, I mean, I, I'm really trying to guess what group it is. I, I would guess that it's a sort of like Christian youth groupy self-help, like volunteer or like youth group Mormon group? Maybe, maybe. Like, I'm, what does put? Because like the the thing that caught me was put getting out. put out. Like, are yeah. they are they living in the institution and then they like get kicked out? It sounds outpatient to me. Oh yeah, like what if it's like a shelter, like a religious shelter? Hmm. So it's like they have to follow the rules or else they get like put out. Oh, or maybe it's a recovery group because like recovery spaces but with religious. Undertones. Yeah, like a, re a religiously undertoned, maybe like rehabilitation type group because re the recovery space is like prime territory for cults to emerge and and marries well mm -hmm. with like religious dogma yeah we did an episode on the cult of um 12-step programs yeah oh i could see that the language around that is really interesting too just from friends that have become sober and like have used the 12-step program they're like yeah i had to transition because that in itself was almost triggering that the language they use but dude my like my my whole the whole idea for my book was because my one of my best friends started going to aa and started speaking in this register that oh felt like full of c cliches and it was obviously building solidarity for her and helping her stay sober but it yeah. sounded undeniably cult-like this story time is from a follower and she wants advice by the way we're, we're stocking the mini fridge so dana has a best friend and we're calling her trinity they have been best friends since first grade and they plan to do everything together including going to the same school so right now they're in 12th grade and they wanted to go to the same college but trinity hasn't been doing well in school. Dana tried to help her, but she wasn't doing so great at tutoring. Trinity was failing her math class, but three months later, it seemed as though Trinity grades were coming up. She noticed Trinity getting good grades, but without knowing the actual work. One day, Dana had lost her phone and used Trinity's phone to call her phone to find it. Out of nowhere, she get a text saying, hey baby, and Dana's confused because Trinity never told her she was talking to anyone and they tell each other everything. She jokingly went through the messages to see what they were talking about and come to find out she was talking to her math teacher. 
She thinks it's weird because their math teacher is almost 40, but she don't know what to say to Trinity to get her to stop. Y'all coming down. This story time is from a follower, and she really needs advice. By the way, we're calling her Imani, and she's 16. So Imani has been with her boyfriend, Devante, for two years. He was her first boyfriend and first love. They met each other's family, and they were attached by the hip. Everyone always assumed that they were going to get married. They were like soulmates. Until one day, Imani wanted to leave the relationship. She said she wanted to meet other people and experience other things. But first, she made the decision on staying with Devante forever. Devante was upset at first because he really only wanted her, but he had to let her go because that's what she wanted. So, after two months of being apart, Imani realizes that she didn't want anybody else but him. Devante was happy that she was ready to come back. So, after seven months of being back together, Devante was hiding news that he was keeping away from her. During their breakup, Devante was with another random girl who was a stranger, and now she's seven months pregnant. Imani feels like it's her fault because she thinks that if she never left, then that never would have happened. Give her some advice down below.